couldn't find puppy. And then I heard some rustling. And there's, there's a little boy. Oh, he's actually relaxing. What are you doing in there? You go boy. You want to stay in there? You want to take a nap? Will you be my kitty model for a video? Hey guys, it's Jasmine and that was Puppy and today we are going to talk about why you should never ever buy pre-ground chicken or meat when making raw cat food at home. Before we get started, if you're new to this channel and into all things cat stuff, especially having to do with cat nutrition and raw cat food, or if you're into fitness and nutrition and things for humans, then make sure that you click that subscribe button below as well as the little bell icon that's right next to it because we do put out new videos every cat or day. So a question that I've gotten a lot is if it's okay to buy the pre-ground chicken or turkey or meat in general from the store when you are making raw cat food? And the very simple answer to that question is no. You never ever want to get any kind of pre-ground meats in order to use to make raw cat food. Why? Well, two words, bacterial contamination. This is the main reason why, unlike beef, many stores will refuse to grind up poultry for their customers. Now let's go back to a report from 1998, which it's crazy to think that that was 20 years ago. Consumer Reports sampled 1,000 fresh chickens from 36 different cities and found that 71% of store-bought chicken contained harmful bacteria, including Campylobacter and Salmonella. Now, interestingly, and keep in mind that this was 20 years ago, but they found that the most contaminated birds were the premium or free range variety, and that there's some form of E. coli found on virtually every single chicken in the market, which by the way, E. coli comes from poop contamination. A little fun fact crumble for you all, since this is something I find super interesting and that my clients also find very interesting. Did you know that there have been studies showing a direct correlation relation between chicken consumption and UTIs in humans. Back to today's subject at hand, in 2013, Consumer Reports revealed that 90% of ground turkey had at least one of five bacteria known to cause illness or even death. This was after testing 257 different kinds of raw ground turkey from different major retailers and even store brands. A couple years later, in 2015, a report from Harvest Public Media found that a ground chicken burger is 12 times more likely than a hamburger to contain salmonella. If you need a clearer comparison, USDA figures have shown that 20% of ground turkey and 40% of ground chicken in stores were contaminated while hamburger was only at around 3%. Now, if you're asking yourself how that compares to whole chicken parts, like whole chicken thighs or breasts or wings, they still show contamination, but only only, only at 24%. So even though the risk is still there, it is not nearly as high. Not to mention when the meat is pre-ground, there are thousands of bird carcasses from numerous different farms going into the same machinery. Making cross-contamination at such an early stage of production seemingly inevitable. Plus, the oxidization that occurs during the grinding process will denature some beneficial nutrients, and grinding in general really cuts back on the length of time for freshness for the meat. Add to that the fact that nearly 70% of the different bacteria strains for salmonella alone have become multi-drug resistant due to the excessive use of antibiotics in poultry production. Basically, what this means is the antibiotics given to these animals in their lifetime are making the bacteria stronger and more resistant to antibiotic treatments in humans. This is what makes food poisoning from poultry specifically very, very dangerous and actually the most fatal type of food poisoning. This is also why choosing antibiotic-free, pasture-raised, organic 
poultry or meats is always a better option. They definitely still have a bacterial contamination risk. Some studies have actually argued that the taste and flavor is the same as commercially produced poultry, but at least they are also shown to have less resistance to fewer antibiotics if you do get sick. And that in itself may be worth the extra couple of dollars to spend. Now, of course, when making raw cat food, the meat stays raw, but if you're a human who is indulging in some poultry, then you definitely want to cook it. And by cooking it and making sure that the internal temperature gets to 165 degrees, that does kill bacteria. However, guess what? In most cases, people aren't actually getting sick from undercooked poultry or chicken, although that does happen. In most cases, the illness is due to cross-contamination during the handling and preparation process. This is also the only way that you can potentially get sick by making your cats raw food since you aren't exactly, hopefully, eating it yourself. If contaminated juices spill from the package, if you are handling raw meat that happens to be contaminated and go to grab a utensil or open a cabinet or a drawer, if you happen to lightly touch a necklace you're wearing or roll your sleeves up and then touch it again later and then who knows, bite your nails. If you put the raw meat on a plate or a cutting board and season it and then go to cook it and then put it back on that same plate plate or cutting board. These are just a handful of ways and different easily overlooked scenarios sometimes where cross-contamination can happen and potentially get you sick. Truth be told, the risk for bacterial contamination is pretty much always there when you're dealing with fresh foods, whether it's leafy greens or vegetables or eggs or clearly poultry. And if you're saying to yourself, well, it seems like vegetables have more recalls or potential illnesses happen than meat does, then you're right because leafy greens actually do statistically get the most people sick due to food poisoning and bacteria being present. But as we learned earlier, food poisoning from poultry actually results in the most deaths. And this is due to that antibiotic resistance. Now I have a bunch of great tips to share with you guys about how to do the best you can to make sure you're getting the freshest meat possible for making raw cat food for your feline fur babies and how to best avoid the risk of cross-contamination when preparing their food. But this video is already pretty long, so I'm going to make that a part two in a way and I'll put that out next Catter Day. So make sure that you click that subscribe button so that you get notified when it goes up. All right, guys, I hope that this video helped to provide you with some clarity on why you never ever want to buy pre-ground meat, especially poultry. If you are new here or to raw cat food in general and want to learn more, please make sure to go check out my cat stuff playlist or you can go directly to catladyfitness.com and click on the videos tab and the entire cat stuff playlist will come up there for you. Please make sure to click that thumbs up below if you like this video because that really helps us out and to share it with any other cat parents who you think would find this information useful. And in case you've been missing it, I've been posting daily December remember puppy pictures here on the YouTube page, which are showing up on our community tab, but if you have the little bell icon checked off, then you will also see it in your regular YouTube feed. And he is very adorable, and he would be very disappointed if you missed all of his modeling this month. Not only that, but I'm going to have a live broadcast soon just to update you guys on a couple of things, and I thought it would be fun to correspond with you at a more live personal level, potentially answer some questions, and mainly just chit chat for a little bit and get to know you guys. Not exactly sure when that's going to be, but sometime definitely this week, so stay tuned so that you can join in and that I could e-meet you guys, I guess. As always, thank you so much for watching. This is perfect timing because the sun is basically down, and we will see you next week. Bye!